I deal with. Yeah, no, that's a really, I'm going to pull on that, the, the idea of how censorship, the methods of censorship real quickly. Um, just because I'm, I'm curious, has it changed over time um, with how these big tech companies have decided how they want to censor? Um, or has it been pretty consistent and we just kind of are starting to notice it as we talk about it more? I mean, it's definitely changed because, and I think the, one of the reasons we've noticed it is because of this, the sheer scale yeah, okay. and size of these companies, right? Because these companies, you know, when, when Section 230 was created, um, you know, they were tiny. Some of them didn't even exist, right? <laughs> they, they weren't around. You, you were dealing with- So like 1996? 1996, yeah, yeah. right? So <laughs> the internet looks completely different, oh, right? Yeah. From, from what it did then. And then interestingly, in the findings of, of Section 230 in the amendment, because it was offered as an amendment, that's mm -hmm. how tiny it is. You know, it talks mm -hmm. about how, you know, the goal of this provision is to create this open dialogue and, and you know, diverse political views online. And, and that was mm -hmm. the goal. I would argue that really hasn't happened. But part of that has been because, you know, instead of, a dozen, you know, similarly sized platforms, we really have just the big three, right? We have yeah. Google, we have Facebook, and we have Twitter. Right. And that, you know, when you have platforms that size, you know, Google filtering information for 90% of America, right? That yeah. They have 90% market share. So people are filtering inf their information through Google. Facebook has 3 billion global users. You know, when you, when you have that magnitude, then of right. course you're noticing their content moderation decisions. And I do think it's inarguable that they have gotten much more political. Yeah. Right. They're not just taking down porn. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, I, and I could argue they're not even doing a good enough yeah. job at that. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, sex trafficking, as we know, still flourishes on these on these mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. But they're very much acting in a very a much more aggressive political way. And I think you can tie that back to the 2016 election. Okay. That, I, that I think in my mind is when these platforms started to very aggressively moderate along ideological lines in ways that we hadn't seen before. Yeah, speaking of which, um, stemming just kind of from the election and the idea.